come up. Uh, suppose this branching wasn't actually about the release numbers. Suppose it, instead we had some branching going on because we've got a lot of people working on our code base. And so, so we've, we've got this master branch, uh, but we've also got a team of developers who've created a branch to go and create a particular feature. And so there we have the master branch and we've got the feature branch. And so the feature code that they've been editing, that's not on the master branch yet. Uh, but they've got their feature that they, they'd like to share some of that those changes back across to the master branch uh, so that all the other developers who aren't working on the feature branch can see it. Well, in this case, we need to do a merge. And so this is the next bit of the directed acyclic graph. It's not a tree. It doesn't just fork. It can come back together. It just doesn't go around in circles. And so we need to get to the situation where master, our branch pointer for master and our branch pointer for the feature branch are both pointing at this new commit that now has two parents because it's the merge of the changes that were made in master since they diverged and the changes that were made in the feature branch since they diverged. How do we do this? Well, the way this works is it's something called a three way merge. And um, I'll explain a little bit of it. I'm not going to show you the full algorithm or anything like that. But what I'll say is that what Git needs to do is it needs to look at the latest version in each of the branches and it needs to look at their most recent common ancestor. It doesn't actually need to worry about the, the history of changes along the way since they diverged. Just where we've got to and what their common ancestor was. And it looks at these line by line and works out, OK, what has changed in each of these files and can I merge them? Now, before I go and show you this uh, live in Git at the command line, let's, um, let's pose a question as to how you think this ought to work. So suppose our repository just contained the text, this is the original. And suppose in the left branch, someone added some text before it and said, you know, added before, but then there's this is the original. And in the right branch, someone had added some text afterwards and you know, it's this is original, added after, and then we go to merge it back together. So pause the video and have a think for a moment. What do you think the result ought to be? OK, and so what happens here is Git can look at it and can go, well, OK, someone's added a line before this is original and someone's added a line after this is, origi is original. And so I can merge this by doing both. I can add the line before and I can add the line afterwards and I can merge that and that will work just fine. Let's ask you about another possibility, though. Suppose I've got the text. This is original. And the person on the, le on the left branch, they go, nah, let's, let's make that capitals, let's shout it, this is original. And in the right branch, they go, well, let, let's put a the in. Let's say this is the original. And now we go to merge these two branches. So again, pause the video for a moment and have a mo take a moment to think, what do you think the output should be? And what do you think Git is going to produce? OK, and... Uh, when I ask this live in class, very often you get some people will decide that, well, the left one has capitalised it and the right one has added the. So what we want to do is we want to add the in and capitalise everything. And so we want this is the original, all in capitals. Other people think, well, the left one has changed those particular characters to capitals. And the right one has inserted the three lower case letters, T, H and E. And so what we should have is... This is, lowercase t h e, original. The answer as to what Git does is, well, actually, Git can't tell what you intended. It can't do it semantically. It can't work out the left one is capitalised, the right one has a word, new word inserted, and so it, it can't disambiguate, you know, do I capitalise everything or anything like that. It doesn't try to be that smart. All it does is it says, right, these two branches, they have made changes to the same line of text and they are different changes and so I am just going to say there is a merge conflict you're going to have to work this one out because I don't know what you want here and then you go in and you edit this manually 
and you fix up the merge conflict and you might decide well okay let's make it all capitals this is the original and that becomes uh, what what's put in there um, but so that three-way merge it's you know it's got a little bit of smarts in it but it's not super smart it's not telepathic it can't tell you uh, which you want to do um, but once you've done that merge you'll then end up getting to this situation where now the um, the new commit is there and the master and the feature branch are both pointers are both pointing to that new commit and so you have a merge commit which has multiple parents and you can tell merge commits because they are the one that have more than one parent to them um, so merging sometimes requires manual manual intervention and uh, the other thing to say is this is more likely the more changes have taken place since the branches were last merged. If you make a, if, you know, as developers work on the code over time and they make lots and lots of changes, the more lines they're changing, the more lines are likely to conflict. And most people don't really like dealing with merge conflicts. So a bit of advice to try and keep your changes small and share them often. And we'll see a lot more on that in future videos. But let's pop across and let's see how to do a merge manually so what I'm going to do so let's pop back into the code well I say code our text file with the Earl of Moray and um, there it is and git status and I am on branch lecture test nothing to commit working tree uh, clean and if you recall uh, my last change was to change that last line with something totally unexpected Let's say I want to merge that change into master. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the the branch that I want to merge the change into. So I'm going to git check out master. And then I'm going to get, say git merge. I would like you to merge in the changes from the branch called lecture test. And here we go. It says auto merging more a dot text, which it's found has changed. And it has said conflict. There is a merge conflict in Mori.txt. Automatic merge failed. Fix the conflicts and then commit the result. And if we have a look at what is now in Mori.txt, uh, we'll see that it's got, you know, there's the lines that aren't changed and it's inserted this special markup. On head, on master, which is the, 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 the branch that we had checked out and we're merging into, it said and Lady Mondegreen, whereas on lecture test, that line said this is going to cause me trouble the way that i can fix up a merge conflict from the command line is again to open my text editor and if i go in there and i and basically what i do is i make it look how i want it and so i say well i certainly don't want those lines of markup in there and oh do i want that before or afterwards uh ooh, let's go put it uh let, let's go put it beforehand no actually no 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 let's let's go put it afterwards all right and, uh, and i tell you what let's go and even put a full stop on the end of it and lady mondegreen and let's write that file and let's go git status and i'm on branch master i have unmerged paths fix conflicts and run git commit uh, both modified moray.txt and so what I'm going to say is to mark the resolution I'm going to git add the file and now git status and I'm on branch master all conflicts fixed but you're still merging git commit to conclude the merge and if I go git commit and you'll see that it has generated a um, it's automatically generated a message for me to say that I am branching uh, sorry, that I am merging the branch lecture test. And so let us now save that and I've committed it. And if I look at the git log on branch master, I can now see that there I have the one where I made the Mondegreen. There I have the change I originally made on um, uh, on the branch lecture test. And there is my merge commit now sitting there at the end. And that uh, that is where I went and merged them. And if I pop across into source tree, I can see the graph merges back together. And there is the uh, the merge of the branch uh, lecture test. OK, the other one that I should show you, I guess, however, is uh, what's what's called a fast forward merge. So it may be. So let's go get check out lecture test again. And well, first of all, let's notice something. If I get check out lecture test, well, okay, I merged lecture test into master, 
but I haven't merged master into lecture test. So suddenly lecture test is still sitting back here. It's not sitting up the latest, latest one. So now I've checked out lecture test. Let us now git merge master and bring that merge commit into the lecture test branch as well. And what we're going to see is we're going to see this little message here, fast forward. Lecture test was, um, if I pop back to the slide, it's probably easiest to show this. When I did the merge into master, I move, I created that commit and I moved the master pointer onto it. I hadn't yet moved the, the feature branch one. I then checked out feature branch and wanted to merge in the changes in master. But master is just strictly ahead of feature branch. The, 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 you know, the, there's not three commits to look at. There's only two. There's the, 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 the common ancestor. Here we go. And there's where master's up to. And so all git needed to do was move the pointer forwards. And that's called a fast forward commit, where all it has to do is move the pointer. It did not need to create a new commit in order to uh, to do that merge. And so if I go git log, I will see that I do have that merge branch lecture test into master, but I don't then have another merge commit that's merging uh, master into lecture test, for instance. OK, so hopefully that has now shown you through creating branches, checking out different um, different branches and how to resolve uh, merge um, merge conflicts and uh, a little bit of the, the, the basics of working with Git on your own computer. And it would be a good time now for you to try some of this in tutorials.